So today's topic is on hepatitis. Hepatitis is a broad term that means inflammation of the liver. It is most commonly caused by viruses but can also be caused by alcohol, drugs like acetaminophen, acetheoprine and methotrexate can be caused by chemicals including systemic poisons like carbon tetrachloride and gold compounds, autoimmune hepatitis, genetic disorders like Wilson's disease which is characterized by accumulation of copper and metabolic abnormalities like hemochromatosis can also cause hepatitis. Types of viral hepatitis are A, B, C, D, and E. They differ in their modes of transmission and clinical manifestations. The different hepati hepatitis virus can be responsible for both acute and chronic liver disease. Hepatitis A virus. This can cause a mild flu-like illness or an acute hepatitis with jaundice. It can also cause acute liver failure. It does not result in a chronic long-term infection. In the United States, the incidence of hepatitis A viral infection has declined since vaccination was recommended for at-risk persons and children at the age of one. Hepatitis A virus is an RNA virus or ribonucleic acid virus that is transmitted primarily through the fecal oral route. It frequently occurs in small outbreaks caused by fecal contamination of food or drinking water. Poor hygiene, improper handling of food, crowded situations, and poor sanitary conditions are contributing factors. Transmission occurs between family members, institutionalized individuals, and children in daycare centers. Foodborne Hepatitis A outbreaks are usually due to food contaminated by an infected food handler. The serological events in hepatitis A virus infection. The virus is present in feces during the incubation period, so it can be carried and transmitted by persons who have undetectable subclinical infections. The greatest risk of transmission occurs before the clinical symptoms are apparent. Hepatitis A is found in feces two weeks be or more before the onset of symptoms and up to one week after the onset of, of jaundice. It is present only briefly in blood. The anti-HAV or antibody to hepatitis A virus, immunoglobulin M or IgM, appears, appears in the serum as the stool becomes negative for virus. Detection of hepatitis A IgM indicates acute hepatitis. Although not commonly assessed clinically, hepatitis A IgG indicates past infection. IgG antibody provides lifelong immunity. So if you see IgG in a hepatitis A patient, it's good. Hepatitis A vaccination and thorough hand washing are the best methods to prevent outbreaks. Hepatitis B virus. Hepatitis B virus can cause either acute or chronic disease. Starting in the 1990s and continuing today, the incidence of HBV infection has decreased because of the widespread use of the hepatitis B vaccination. About 12 million Americans have been infected with hepatitis B virus. In the majority of adults with acute hepatitis B, the infection completely resolves. Of the more than 1 million Americans who develop chronic infections, the severity of liver impairment may range from none to severe liver disease. Approximately 15 to 25 percent of chronically infected persons die from chronic liver disease. Hepatitis 
B is a DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid virus. It can be transmitted perinatally by mothers infected with hepatitis B virus, percutaneously through IV drug use, accidental needle stick punctures, or by mucosal exposure to infectious blood, blood products, or other body fluids like semen, vaginal secretions, and saliva. In people with HBV, hepatitis B surface antigen or HBS AG has been detected in almost every body fluid. Infected semen and saliva contain much lower concentrations of HBV than does blood, but the virus can be transmitted via these secretions. If GI bleed occurs, feces can be contaminated with the virus from the blood. There is no evidence that urine, feces, breast milk, tears, and sweat are infected feces without GI bleeding. The at-risk population for hepatitis B virus. Sexual transmission is a common mode of transmission for hepatitis B virus. Men who have sex with men, especially those practicing unprotected anal intercourse, are at risk for HBV infection. Although there is a much lower risk of transmission with kissing and sharing of food items, these activities may spread the virus via saliva. Other at risk individuals include those who have household contacts with chronically infected people patients undergoing hemodialysis, and healthcare and public safety workers. Organ and tissue transplantation is another potential source of infection. In some patients with acute hepatitis B, there is no readily identifiable risk factor. Hepatitis B virus can live on a dry surface for at least seven days. Hepatitis B virus is much more infectious than, hepatite, uh, than HIV. Hepatitis B virus is a complex structure with three distinct antigens. The surface antigen, which is HBSAG, the core antigen, HBC antigen, and the E antigen. HBS AG in the serum for six months or longer after infection indicates chronic HBV infection. Each antigen has corresponding antibody that may help develop in response to the HBV infection. The presence of hepatitis B surface antigen antibody in the blood indicates immunity from the HBV vaccine or from past HBV infection. Hepatitis C virus. Infection with hepatitis C virus can result in both acute and chronic illness. Acute hepatitis C, which is usually asymptomatic, can be difficult to detect unless diagnosed with laboratory testing. The most common causes of acute hepatitis C are injection drug use and outbreaks among HIV positive men who have sex with men. The majority of patients who acquire hepatitis C usually develop chronic infection. Most are unaware of their infection. Chronic HCV results in a potentially progressive liver disease. 20 to 30 percent of infected patients develop cirrhosis. Hepatitis C is the most common cause of chronic liver disease and the most common indication for liver transplantation in the United States. HCV is an RNA virus that is primarily transmitted percutaneously. The most common mode of HCV transmission is sharing of contaminated needles and the equipment among IV drug users. The proportion of cases attributed to high-risk sexual behavior, example, <coughs> unprotected sex and multiple partners has increased in recent years. In the United States, 10% of all cases of HCV infection are due to occupational exposure 
hemodialysis and perinatal transmission. Some patients with HCV cannot identify a source. The rise of perinatal HCV transmission is higher in women who are co-infected with both HIV and HCV. Patients given blood or blood products before 1992 when blood product testing for HCV began may be at risk for chronic HCV infection and should be tested. Because of the 15 to 20 year delay between infection and the clinical appearance of liver damage, long-term effects of HCV infection pose important future healthcare challenges. Chronic HBV and HCV account for 80% of the cases of hepatocellular cancer. Persons at risk for HCV infection are also at risk for HBV and HIV infections. About 30 to 40% of HIV infected patients also have HCV. This high rate of co-infection is related primarily to IV drug use. Co-infection with HIV and HCV places the patient at greater risk for progression to cirrhosis. Hepatitis D virus. This is also called as a Delta virus. It is a defective single-stranded RNA virus that cannot survive on its own. It requires hepatitis B to replicate. It can be acquired at the same time as HB, HBV or a person with HBV can be infected with HDV at a later time. HDV is transmitted percutaneously, similar to HBV. It can cause a spectrum of illness ranging from an asymptomatic chronic carrier state to acute liver failure. There is no vaccine for HDV. However, vaccination against HBV reduces the risk for HDV co-infection. Hepatitis E virus is an RNA virus transmitted via the fecal-oral rub. The usual mode of transmission is via drinking contaminated water. Hepatitis E infection occurs primarily in developing countries with epidemics reported in India, Asia, Mexico, and Africa. Only a few cases of hepatitis E virus have been reported in the United States. And these cases have been primarily in persons who had recently traveled to an HEV endemic area. One form of hepatitis E is prevalent among patients who have had organ transplants. So to conclude, hepatitis A and E trans are transmitted by the fecal oral route and they both are RNA virus. Hepatitis B, C and D spread through blood and body fluids. Hepatitis D cannot survive without hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is a DNA virus. Hepatitis C is an RNA virus. And hepatitis D is a defective RNA virus or a Delta virus.